PTC Creo Parametric Lesson 12, Part 3. Next, we're going to add parameters to each one of our components. You can do this in the drawing, you can do it in the assembly, or you could have done it when you were creating the parts, which is probably the more natural place to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our assembly. And make sure I get the proper one. I've got quite a few different variations of everything. And I'm going to click down here and select assembly. And I want to have the a full assembly, not the sub-assembly. So it'll take a couple of seconds for it to load because of the double-ended and single-ended studs with all their threads and also with the threads on the flange nut. Again, normally you don't model all that in and everything will be a lot quicker. If you imagine it's taking a few minutes or a few seconds to do this one, what would happen if you have uh, 200 fasteners on your model? You better have a good system. And I'm going to open up my model tree and I'm going to change the tree filter so that everything shows. Okay, and I'm also going to go over and I'm going to change my tree columns. And what I'm going to put in here is, so I'm going to select model parameters and I'm going to put in description and model by, and then I'm going to type in a new one, PRTNO and DSC. These are the same parameters we must have in each one of our components. And we can change the width of these if we want. And change it back later. So I'm going to expand this out, take a look at it. So there's all of our components listed. In this particular case, you may not want to have the features also present, like so. So if you want to simplify that, let's go back over here to the tree filters and let's turn off features and annotations. Nothing else is listed there, so it's OK. So apply. OK. So it leaves it a little more, more compact. And again, you know, you can actually change these column don't have to use what you uh, selected previously when you had the dialog up. You can change column width to whatever you want. And that looks like everything is there correctly. And mine is filled in. So what we're going to do here is we're going to open up each one of the components and take a look at the parameters that we're supposed to have in each one of them. So I think I'll start with the... Uh, one on the bottom here, which is the flange nut. And click on Tools, Parameters. And this information is being read into it because we did have a material that was listed. And we call that purchased. That's the value. And PRTNO, you can see that's the parameter that we created and we put in our uh, repeat region for our title block bill of materials string and this string just means a series of characters dsc is our description and again it's listing out what this is and designate means it's designated for the product management system you might you know you might have one maybe you're using uh wind chill or interlink or one of those so this is the information if you wanted to add a parameter, whatever it is, so let's say we add a parameter, and let's just, I'm just going to call it new. Under the type, it's not going to be read in from someplace else. It's going to be a string of characters, and then whatever one it is for my name. So this would, you know, I could type whatever it is. Um, I'm just going to type in drilling and designate. So this information, this is the new parameter that I put in. 
and this information will show up if there's a column for it on the title block. We didn't put the title, we didn't put this in there for any of the columns. So there's really not, it's not gonna show up when we put use the drawing format, but this is how you construct it. And you're gonna have to do the PRTNO and DSC for every one of the components. This is a very common place to make a mistake. Uh, people type in DCS. Well, it's not gonna read that into the title block bill of materials on your format if you don't have the names exactly the same. So on this one here, if I wanted to get rid of that one, I could delete that one. So I'm gonna cancel. So each one of these is going to have all these this information put into it already. And again, it helps if you're doing this and getting it done as you go. And this doesn't have a description and modeled by because these these uh, items that we got from Car Lane did not have that embedded in the component. We'll open up a gun. Here's one of ours at the ball. Tools, parameters, and you can see again, certain things were automatically put in. And you can also see at this point that, for instance, the description and the model by. Um, We can add some information here. You put your name here. I don't know if I added a little bit extra. I guess I did. So that information can be input here if you're missing any. Now, the other one I want to look at is the club, you know, the clamp plate, because what we did is we modeled this in the top down. One thing that you may not have done is you've got to go and set your datum A, B, and C for the part. Make sure every part has its own unique color. Do not have all the parts the same color. <clears throat> and I'm going to go up to tools and parameters. And on this one, since we did it on top down, I don't have a category for a description and for uh, modeled by did not input that information as I was going either. But you make you have to make sure that you have the PRTNO and the DSC. The material, you may not have done that also. So make sure you've gone to the material dialogue, selected it, and completed this. All this information must be done. Now, if you look here, <clears throat> excuse me, we have all this information available to us in columns now. And you could have done this on the drawing and used the navigation area on the drawing and put in the columns. But if you have 4,000 components, it becomes a little more cumbersome, I think, working in the drawing or in the model. So we have the plate here was description, nothing was done. So let's put in string and the value. And let's just say, plate plate component okay so we can add this information the same way we can add anywhere in here if we wanted to add the name of the person doing it i don't think bob is alive but he won't mind us using his name so all this information again can be put in one place here. And a lot of people like to work in this method rather than having every component open. Normally, again, you would have done a lot of this information input when you're doing the, the component, and then you would have used the parameters or uh, the tool and add the parameters at that particular point. So it does get filled in. The main thing is that you have all this information in on every one of the components. That's the most important thing. If you don't have this information, you can, again, add it at any time, but it you want it in there before you start using that, the drawing. So when you create the drawing, you will have that available. So I'm just going to drag this back, or I'm going to collapse it into nothing. So if I was just quickly to do a, <clears throat> I'm just going to do a sample drawing here. We'll go to the E, empty with format, bronze, and we want to go to the format that was created. And 
just this one right here. Okay. And what this will have you see here is you automatically have all this information put in there for you. And I'm going to select it again with the table tab selected and move it, and everything gets moved in. If you don't have enough room for any of your components or your names in the column, just again change it to whatever you want to. I think this one has already been changed. That's why it came in correctly. So you can readjust as you go. And you can see it filled in everything here. And if we go back over to our one of the things we did add, it looks like I even spelled something wrong here. But it looks like one of the things we added was a category for the subassembly and we filled in information here and that's why it showed up in the title block in the bill of materials I should say. Yeah.